everyone, it's Savannah from Hey Wanderer and today I'm going to be taking you on a garden tour. We have never introduced YouTube to our fully complete gardens. First I'm gonna show you all of our garden beds and then we'll go through and look at all the things that we have growing. Today is June 1st, so it is hot. Lots of things are growing. We don't have all of our plants in the ground yet. We still have some winter squash to plant, a few little basil plants, and we have a lot of flowers still. We still have things to actually cut out of the garden too, so we'll get into that, but let me show you around first. As we walk out of our house, this is where our main garden is, and then this is where we have a lot of potted plants these are both olive trees. We have a satsuma tree and then we've just got a tea plant and we have some blueberries. We have some grapes. We're going to try to grow these up the trellis. There's one here and one over there. And then we also have our green stalks. So this green stalk has 30 strawberry plants in it. It's growing these little tiny strawberries that are very delicious. I think these ones are actually perfect to be picked right now. Casey is eating the... Mm little baby strawberries oh, it's good. they're so good and here on this table is where we have plants that need to go in or a lot of these are actually just extras that we'll try to give away so back over here there are steps that go up into the vegetable garden and we have these garden beds that go all the way down these are mostly just florals and decorative things there are some peas down there this is a bolted parsley plant curled parsley and it has some pretty flowers this isn't fully bloomed yet but kind of looks like a dill kind of like a lace flower carrot flower all that family so i'll just go through this really quickly but you just see we have this is a land hannah plant back here and some pansies this is our favorite little flower section of the garden just have these really big papery petunias and then lavender this came back this year so we had planted it last year and it was really small and it came back looking really beautiful this year and then this verbena that's also down here just the combination is so pretty and this is a poppy plant that just bloomed today and this is something that self-seeded itself we did not plant this this year we planted it last year but the flowers are really pretty this is lauren's grape and then we have this massive oregano plant that we planted last year and then it just got out of control and then this is a rosemary bush that is also out of control and this is a eucalyptus tree so we bought this when it was two little twigs like literally the plant was like this big and we just thought it would be cool to have eucalyptus had no idea how it grew we planted it just keeps growing and we realized the first year that it came back that it actually grows as a tree and you can't really tell because it's falling over but it is a tree <laughs> we have a lot of eucalyptus down in here we have some lemon thyme and it's blooming you can see all right and over here we just have a mix of things this is a bolted carrot it's blooming over there i'll show you from the other side we have lantana another tea plant this basically twigs and now it's regrowing beautiful leaf it's a speedwell the bees love it obviously and we just have some sedum in here here are all these peas, lots of peas. One volunteer kale, which is actually not bolted, which is amazing. And then here's another parsley, like the other one. And then this is some crazy allium type thing that's growing out of the rock wall right here. It's very bizarre, so if anyone knows what this is, please tell us. All right, so up the stairs is our potager garden. Casey is over here talking to the chickens. So yes, to the left here is where the chickens are. We designed this just to be a very pretty layout with a semi-water fountain in the middle. And this is just what it looks like. This is a work in progress because we got a new shed and so we're trying to regrow the grass over there. So this is what the shapes of these garden beds are. All right, and back here we have these in-ground beds and it, this was just our solution because this is so sloped back here we just wanted to have more growing space so we're doing we've done no dig beds back here and i will obviously get to showing you what's back here but this is our growing space we go wait is that oh no that's an easter egg mm -hmm. i see so we have a chicken right now who is an olive egger and she's broody so i thought maybe she had started laying eggs again but no some more information to note we are in zone 7a we live in the middle of nashville tennessee so we're basically in we're not in like downtown but we live in the city 
so we actually have a pretty big space back here compared to what some people have in the neighborhood around us some people have way larger things than we have but we definitely feel like we have really used our space well so the chicken yard is here and it goes all the way back they have all the space to themselves back there and it cuts off there we do have a door that lets them out into this space but since we got the shed done we had to get that area leveled and because we're growing grass we definitely don't want the chickens over there pecking things and obviously you see there's a fence there because we're trying to keep the dogs chickens everybody off of that space so this first archway right here last year we grew some small pumpkins which ended up actually being pretty big we grew them over the top of this and it was really magical but it was also a lot of foliage and just like big pumpkins hanging out so this year I wanted to do noodle beans I planted these from seed and as you can see they just wind all the way up and I bet in a couple of weeks this thing will it'll be meeting in the middle so there are actually purple noodle beans red and green here so it's gonna be a little tunnel of long hanging beans and it'll be multicolored over here uh, we don't have anything at this moment but we will definitely plant something there. And then we have our kales. These are newly planted kales. If you follow us on Instagram, you probably saw that we had over here this huge bed of kale and it had bolted and the bees were loving it, but we went ahead and planted some new kale so we could have some that was not bolted. And it's finally getting where we can pick it. Over here we have lettuce. This is a mizuna plant that got mixed up with the lettuces because we would not have planted it here. So we have a mix of lettuces and I do not know exactly what is here, but it's looking good. In this garden bed, we have feverfew that is taking over. We actually had some broccoli plants over here and we harvested the broccoli because it was going to bolt and this one started growing new little heads. And those actually look like they're about to start bolting, so we could cut those and keep them. But here's some of the few, few that is blooming. So we will let these bloom, and then we're going to cut back a lot of this because it's taking over, and there's a lot of valuable planting space there. And over here, we have some cabbages that are taking forever, barely starting to head up. They are definitely in a shady area over here, so it is possible that they could still give us cabbage, but we'll see. And this netting is just to try to keep the cabbage moths off of it, which has been actually pretty helpful, but it flies off, and then as you can see, this has damage on it and then this bed is a potato bed and it is out of control also there was spinach in here it's trying to bolt but and we were picking it but the potatoes just really overtook it so there's some in there and then this is sweet william but it's already to the end of flowering so we need to cut those back okay here's what i'm talking about the potato plant has come down and is in the walkway so I need to try to figure out how to get this just out of the walkway. This bed is a little out of control. This trellis is for cucumber plants. So as you can see, we have some of those already growing up and there are seeds planted all along this line. And so some of them just aren't big enough to come up here yet and all this stuff overtook it. But this is all winter stuff, so it's gonna come out soon. We have bok choy, as you can see. These are beets. Over here we have kohlrabi. I'll show you one on the other side. And then on this side we have Chinese cabbage. It's looking really pretty. And I think this is more cabbage. That's clearly not going to do anything before it gets too hot. Oh yes, and we have tomatillos on this side. So the idea is that there will be tomatillos in this bed and cucumbers and everything else is going to be cut out. And those summery things will grow and take over and we probably will have room to plant some flowers on this side or some herbs. Okay, here is a kohlrabi. So some of them are pretty tiny, but that, that's the biggest one we have right now. We actually harvested one yesterday. Oh, that is cabbage worm. We don't want that. And then these are the tromboncino squash. So I have two of those planted on the bottom of this trellis and two on the side also. So this center bed, there's bee balm here in the sage, which is blooming, but everything else is flowers. We just wanted this to be really pretty. So we have things like phlox and what else? We have star flower and there's nasturtium growing back there. Same thing on the other side. Just waiting for flowers to pop out. This back bed is full of garlic. And then we have also lettuce. We actually need to eat this lettuce. Clearly this one has bolted. 
that was a red romaine. It bolted way faster than everything else. Our garlic actually should be ready to harvest pretty soon. Oh wow. I kind of want to pick one of these. Nice. Definitely don't think it's ready. There's a worm. Casey just found a garlic scape over here, which I didn't realize these were hard necks. So they're definitely not ready. So we will cut all the scapes off when they come and then we will wait 20 days before we, give or take, before we think about pulling it out. So this is a pepper bed. These steaks will not be here. I'm not gonna stake these. I actually did stake the peppers last year, but I'm just gonna let the bush of them all hold each other up. And then there's some leeks growing. There's a lot of different varieties in here. I'm probably not gonna go through each variety. It's just a lot, but there's a little pepper growing. We have chives on this corner and that corner. One of them is garlic and one of them is onion, but we use them the same. This bed is also a pepper bed, but it has other things growing in it. I actually don't know what this is. I think it's cauliflower. These were planted really late, so those will probably end up going to the chickens. And then I have one eggplant. We planted it last year and it got eaten, so don't have any experience growing that. And then this is a pepperoncini pepper growing. So that'll probably be the first thing we have in the pepper area. And then here is a lot of bolted Mizuna. So the idea is that all of this wintery crop is gonna come out and then this will, the peppers will raise up in this place because they do have, I do have pepper plants planted under here. So I'm gonna pull this up and give it to the chickens. Ladies. We got some snails for ya. So I'll probably pick one of these every other day until they're all gone, give them to the chickens, and then we'll have the space for the peppers to take over. And these are red mustard. This was the free seed that everyone got in their Baker Creek orders growing nicely. And then this bed with the cage. We planted these strawberry plants last year and all of our strawberries, which was only a few, but they got eaten by squirrels. So we built this cage. We have a video about it. It has worked to keep critters out. So we've had a lot of strawberries this year. There are a lot that need to be picked basically right now. This is that carrot flower that I was going to show you from the other side. It's actually really pretty and these will turn into seeds that you could save and plant for more carrots. So this is obviously a seed that a uh, carrot that was left last year. So the last two beds are tomato beds. This one is already planted. It definitely needs trellising. I planted some beets in the center, hoping that they can grow while the tomatoes shade them. We'll see if that works this year. So this is basically what this bed will be. But this has full cabbage right here that is so close to being ready. This one is not as far along. And I don't know if that one will make it, but I'm hoping that we actually have had a 93 degree day and this has been fine, so. Waiting for that to come out to finish planting the tomatoes over there. But you can see that these ones are planted. These ones were planted the earliest. So there are going to be tomatoes over here. These are sun gold tomatoes. These ones need to be trellised and pruned. So we need to do that soon. All right, so that is what's in the front beds. If you're interested in varieties, leave us a comment below and I'll get into that next time. But there's still the back part, so Casey is going to take you along. She's gonna take the camera and take you on a tour of the back, and I'm gonna finish picking strawberries. Okay, so we have this fence here because Johnny Rose just cannot be well behaved in these beds back here, so let me show you. So first up here, this is an apple tree. That's also an apple tree. One of them is, I think, golden delicious, and the other one is honey crisp. The problem with trees here is they get something called cedar rust. We're hopeful, but I don't know. Down here, this plant of these, that's roselle. This is a raspberry, another raspberry, another raspberry. It's the apple tree. These twigs, it's either ginger or turmeric that's been planted back here. These other two are raspberries. And this is lemon verbena. This is stevia stevia pineapple sage. You'll see a couple stick here. These are raspberries 
different raspberries. This is a blueberry, another raspberry. This is a blackberry that was planted last year. And I think we're gonna get some berries soon. This is zucchini and this tiny guy is a blackberry. This is the basil garden. There's just a bunch of varieties of basil right here. This is dill right here. And this is a grapevine, more basils. This is an elderberry bush we just planted, a grapevine again. And then this whole bed, which looks empty, actually has dahlia tubers in it. I have a few dahlias that we grew from seed. This is all garlic. And this bed here is all garlic. I'm sure you're wondering why we're growing so much garlic. We're gonna preserve a lot and share it. These are two volunteer sunflowers, so they actually look like we might get something out of them soon. Okay, so here in the front, we've got onions. These are bush beans. Some okra, I think that's what it looks like. And then this is all corn here and then these are onions two zinnias and then there's some flowers different fl flowers kind of planted in this little patch right here and then these are melon types and then this bed is a lot of sweet potatoes and then some blue potatoes here and right now there's nothing planted in this part but we will oh we have a little bunny there he is We get <laughs> anyway, we get some bunnies. Okay, so right here we have you'll see one, two, three. You can't see from here, but four trees. There's a two different peach trees and cherry trees. And I'm gonna give you a view from back here see the chickens so yeah like the chickens have this run area it kind of goes all around the garden they just can't get in the garden so we try to give them as much space as possible here is kind of what it looks like from this angle looking down pretty cool And that is our garden. We get asked a good amount. I believe we're on like a third of an acre. That's including the front yard and the house. So you can really grow a lot of food. And then we still have this whole area over here for the dogs. All right, so that's what we're growing in our garden right now. A lot of people kind of look at this and think, what are they gonna do with all that food? And Casey and I actually were just talking about how I don't think people realize how much food humans actually eat. And we just want to be able to grow as much of our own food as we can. So that's why we're growing so much. And we plan on sharing whatever we have in excess, like the garlic, there's a lot of garlic and we'll preserve everything that we can with the garlic. And then we will give away what we don't need. We have plenty of people who are interested in homegrown organic vegetables and when you think about it like we have a bed of strawberries and we have this tower of strawberries and we can pick like say you know like this much every other day which seems like a lot but when you're eating your own food it goes really quickly and then you know one of my <laughs> dreams for this year I really want to make strawberry jam for my own strawberry so I canned a lot of jams last year I did some strawberry I think I only got like six or eight jars like the jelly jars and I would like to do more than that but even if that's all I can do I would like to be able to do that with the strawberries that we grew ourselves so that's just kind of our goal here is to grow as much of our food that we eat as possible. So that's why you see a lot of things. And honestly, a lot of the things we are growing won't be enough. Like we're still obviously gonna have to use the grocery store and utilize our local farmers for things like organically, ethically raised meat. So there's definitely a limit to what we can do here in the city, but we're trying to maximize what we do, what space we do have right now. So. If you liked this tour, uh, just let us know in the comments. We can definitely work on doing more tours as the garden is growing, if that's something that you're interested in. We also do a lot of DIY, so give us a follow if you like any of that stuff. Thanks so much for watching. 
Have a good day. We'll see you next time.